blow dry styling. And thank goodness for y'all's benefit that this has now been put on state board in the place of finger waves and pin curls. We have finally updated. Blow dry styling is a technique of drying and styling damp hair in one operation. Has revolutionized the hairstyling world. Today's women desire hairstyles that require the least time and effort to maintain. I happen to see this evolve in my first few years in the business. I had been in a shop about four years when the first blow dryers came out and curling irons. And hairdressers had meetings because we thought that was the end of our world. If women could now do their own hair, they didn't need us for anything. You know, because we had people that come and got shampoos and sets every week, and we, we couldn't figure out how in the world are we going to make a living now, because all they're going to do is come to us for cuts. We do more business now than we ever have in the world. It brought about other things. Now they had the money for hair color, permanent waves, nail services, facial services. The selection of styling tools, techniques, and products must relate to the client's lifestyle. Can she style her own hair, and how much time will she have to do it? It's our responsibility to guide and educate her through the process, so we're going to actually teach her how to do what we used to do for her. She's going to do her own styling now. We're going to do the cutting. She's going to do the styling. She can now shampoo every day if she wants to and doesn't have to worry about taking care of that style from week to week to when she could get back to the salon. Remember the first impression the client will have of the haircut you have performed will most likely be determined by the quality of the blow dry style. So even if you've done a good cut, if you do not blow dry style it or style it into a satisfying style for her, she's not going to like it. The hair, <clears throat> excuse me, the haircut itself may be excellent, but the blow dry is weak. The client will perceive it as not being a good one or what she required. And as with most other things, the tools we use determines a lot about the results we're going to get. <clears throat> a blow dryer is an electrical device designed for drying and styling hair in one single service. Walmart sells a lot of blow dryers. They sell good blow dryers. They do not sell professional blow dryers. Is there a difference in professional? What is the difference? The profession, they'll last longer, they have a higher wattage, meaning they'll work quicker, they usually have more heat, more air stream, therefore we can get through quicker. Its main parts are a handle, a slotted nozzle, a small fan, a heating element, and speed or heat controls. Some come with cooling buttons. One of my students asked me yesterday as we were going through um, the state board, Said, you know, when we do it in the salon, we blow dry them and then we put it on cool to set the curl in it. You want me to do that? And um, no, because the mannequin's going to be thrown in the bag in just a minute. There's no need to take the time to do that. Because in all actuality, right now, there's no electricity at state board as far as being able to plug a blow dryer. So you're going through the motions. The temperature control panel helps to produce a steady stream of air that is desired temperature. The blow dryer's nozzle attachment or concentrate, concentrator is a directional feature that can direct the air stream to any section of the hair more intensely. We want to be careful that we don't direct that to the scalp. And we want the blow dryer moving at all times because to hold it still is going to put concentrated heat right on some hair, which is damaging. We may also have a diffuser attachment. What a diffuser is for is when we put this very pretty perm in somebody's hair and she wants to wear that perm as is. She don't want any curling irons or anything. She doesn't, is not able to do a lot with her hair. So we put the diffuser on there and what it does is take the airflow around away from it and just gives us the heat with a little bit of airflow and that way we don't disturb her curls and yet we can dry her hair. Keep your blow dryer as safe and effective as possible. Make sure that it is always perfectly clean and free of dirt, dirt grease, and hair before using. And one of the things on there, and y'all all go home and check yours at home, I hope, you'll find a little place on it, and it's the intake for the air. 
and it will have something that looks like a screen wire to usually have some little plastic things over it too. But you need to keep the lint, the hair, and the fuzz pulled out of it because once it gets covered up with it, your blow dryer is going to burn up, and that's usually what causes them to burn up. And one other thing, since it is an intake, it's kind of like a vacuum cleaner. If you mess around and get the get it turned around backwards, it will grab that hair up and, and pull your client's hair, your hair, and I see some smiles, so some of y'all have already caught yours in it. So be real careful about that. Combs and picks are designed to distribute and part the hair. They come in a wide variety of sizes and shapes. The length and spacing of the teeth varies from comb to comb. When I was trained, we were told, you comb wet hair, you brush dry hair. And that rule still applies today, except they are making brushes now out of materials that you can use on wet hair. And the reason you didn't want to brush wet hair is because of the type of bristles we had before put too much stretch and pulled on the elasticity of the hair. So that's why it wasn't satisfactory to use them on there. But check what you buy and make sure if you're going to be using this brush or comb for blow drying that is developed for that. Our brushes, when choosing a styling brush, take into account the texture, length, and styling needs of the hair you're working with. Brushes come in many sizes, shapes, and materials. And I got real tickled. I was talking to one of the hairdressers here in town the other day, and we were talking about this new blow-dry styling at State Board and the paddle brush. And in your book, that's the bigger square brush here, and some of y'all have already tried the paddle brushes. A lot of people are trying to use the paddle brush for blow-dry styling. The paddle brush has a solid back to it, which allows for no airflow. Vent brushes are usually more popular, or either the round brushes that have the metal in the middle and then the holes that the air can go through. But if you're not careful and you're using the paddle brush on wet hair for blow-dry styling and that hair is long, you're going to wind up with it tangled up in there and have to get it out, and it will take so long to blow dry when there's no airflow, it cuts off the airflow from going through. And we got to talking about each other using it ourselves and we've been in the business so long we should have realized before we bought it because 25 years ago they came out with one. They didn't call it the paddle brush, they call it the cushion brush at that time. And naturally it was new and we all had to have one and we tangled them up in our hairs, in our clients' hairs. So look at your brushes real carefully and decide what they're capable of doing and know if they are should be used on wet hair or just on dry hair. So classic styling brush is a half-rounded rubber-based brush with smooth, rounded-in nylon quills. Usually we'll have seven or nine rows. Back in our dispensary, they're either beige or black. So you all know what I'm talking about because you've had them out. Paddle brushes have large flat bases are well suited for mid to longer length hair. The best ones have ball tip nylon pins and staggered pin patterns to do, that do not snag the hair. Then we have our grooming brushes are generally oval with pure natural bristles or quills. And our vent brushes with their ventilated design are used to speed up the blow drying process. So they make, that makes them ideal for blow drying. Our round brushes come in different diameters. The round brushes are relatively new, and when I say relatively new, we're talking about the last five or six years. But we used to have round curling brushes, and I think a few companies still put them out, that are electrical, kind of like the curling iron. They're said to be used in place of a curling iron. Also a teasing brush, and this is when we want a little extra volume or bounce. It has a tail for sectioning along with a narrow row of bristles. The teasing brushes are perfect for back combing. If it's used for back brushing, back combing, then we know it's not suitable for use on wet hair because it's made on the type of bristles, made out of the type of bristles to be used on dry hair. Our sectioning clip, that's just to take keep some hair out of the way while we blow dry the other. Styling lotions, thought of as liquid tools. And we've got to stop and think about what we're using. We're going to talk about the styling lotions, the foams and the mousses, the gels, liquid gels or texturizers, straightening gels, pomades or waxes, silicone shiners, and also hairspray. 
And the main thing we've got to do is analyze the hair first before we decide on a styling product. What happens if we have real fine gel, real fine hair, and we use a thick gel on it? It weighed it down, and our blow dry style is not going to look natural, not going to be fluffy. So, what would we use for somebody with fine hair? Foam mousse. Foam mousse would be good. What about the liquid gels or texturizers? Yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about with the liquid gels? They're in a spritz bottle and spray out kind of like liquid hairspray. Possibly volumizers too. Possibly volumizers. Another popular product that the book is not even um, mentioning today is your thermal active setting sprays. What does thermal active mean? It, the heat will activate it and it puts a protective coating on the hair and this is especially good for someone who uses the blow dryer every day on their hair because it puts a little protective covering. Our styling lotions give a style more hold and can add shine or curl or take curl away. They can greatly enhance the style or if poorly used can ruin its overall look. Foam or mousse is a light, airy, whip styling product that resembles shaving foam. Gives moderate volume and body. Massage it into damp hair to highlight the textured movement or blow dry it straight for styles in which body without texture is desired. Gel is a thickened styling preparation. It's firm bodied. Now we want this style to stay when we go to gels. It's usually clear or transparent, comes in a tube or body, bottle probably has the strongest hold of all the products. Similar in function to firm hold gels is liquid gels or texturizers, but they're lighter. They're usually more liquid. They allow for easy styling, defining, and molding. With brushing, they add volume and body to the style. They're good for all hair types. They offer firmer, longer hold for fine hair. Then we have our straightening gels. When applied to damp hair that is wavy, curly, or extremely curly and then blow-dried, straightening gels are going to relax the hair to give it a smooth, straightened finish. They also counter frizzy hair by coating the hair shaft. We have our volumizers, and these are really popular. And what do they call them? The root, root lifters. And we know it's not root lifters because the root, roots are again beneath the scalp. But they're be, to be put right at the base of the hair shaft so it lifts and stands up. When sprayed into the base of fine wet hair, volumizers add volume to the shape, especially at the base when we blow dry. When a vent brush or round brush is used and the hair is not stretched too tightly around the brush, even more volume can be achieved. So we might not even use a brush on this if we put a root lifter on there. We might hold it up and spike it even with the root lifters. Pomade or wax adds considerable weight to the hair by causing strands to join together, showing separation. Used on dry hair, this makes the hair very easy to mold. Silicon shiners. Everything now is about shine. And why is that with hair? Why are we so much about shine? Makes it look healthier. Makes it look healthier. And aren't we doing a lot of things to our hair chemically that takes the shine out of it? We've got transparent shines that are hair color. We got shine sprays. We got shine styling products. Silicon shiners add gloss and sheen to the hair while creating textural definition. Non-oily silicon shine products are excellent for all hair types. Then we have our hair spray or finishing spray. It's applied in the form of a mist to hold a style in position. It is the most widely used of styling products. And clients more and more buy that from who? From us. Because they can only get the professional type styling products from the beauty salon. Alright, y'all have questions?